Hi guys, today I wanted to have a bit of an informal chat about how it is that I became a professional ballet dancer. I thought that might be kind of interesting for older dancers, also young, inspiring dancers. Maybe you're wondering how it is that like you can even get to a professional level. I've danced in two professional ballet companies in Europe. I've performed with the San Francisco Ballet as well as the Pennsylvania Ballet as a student or a trainee, so I also do have experience with American companies to an extent. So I think that it's um, gonna be kind of an interesting learning experience maybe for people from different backgrounds and from different countries. Here we go. Age three, I was put into like a little movement class. We did a little gymnastics theme. We did a little stretching, nothing really ballet, but it was, you know, ballet. I did that for about three years and I just was having fun and I liked moving. Then around like six or seven, we moved me to another school, which was actually closer to where we lived at that moment. That was again, just like an informal training. People went through until high school, I guess. They had like a dance team and they had different classes and they actually even had a music program. But you know, it was kind of for fun, maybe for something to get into college or something like that. I met a lot of friends, we had fun. I did get on a dance team at one point, probably closer to 10 years old, I think. I was taking a few classes a week, nothing super serious. And then I remember one of the girls, her parents knew each other. The parents were talking about how there's this school that you know, we'd have to commute to, but it's a little bit more serious. Like the training is a bit better. And from what I remember, it was because one of the girls, she wanted to take her tap dancing more seriously. I wasn't gonna be a tap dancer. I actually didn't even really like ballet. I kind of like jazz. Like I liked doing the fun stuff. It was like ballet. It was more lyrical kind of dance team movement. So I don't know, my mom and my dad just thought it would be a good idea. So, okay, I guess I'm doing it. So then we started going one day a week there. I think it was on Thursdays. And I don't know why I would remember that. And I really remember looking in on one of the upper level ballet classes and I was just really inspired. I don't know what it was in my head that I was thinking, but I just remembered thinking, oh, I really want to do that. So I started getting hyper-focused at about 12. Probably still didn't really understand what it was to be a professional. I mean, for sure I didn't understand anything to be a professional, but I was gonna start taking it more seriously and specifically ballet because I saw it as something very different than what I had been exposed to. And then I had a really nice teacher there and she was very friendly and she was very helpful. Also was the first person to like get me to point shoes. I mean, I certainly wasn't particularly good. Like I think I'll probably put in a video of what I looked like before. I wasn't particularly talented. You wouldn't look at me and be like a professional ballet dancer. I think what happened was that there was a summer intensive bigger school that they were attached to, the Rock School for Dance Education, that they are gonna do a summer course and they do that every year. And so then there's like auditions. I think I might have had to go into Philadelphia for the audition, but like I have no memory of it at all. I just really remember my mom finding out, I guess, from my teacher that they wanted me to come and I think I was offered some kind of a scholarship. I remember my mom told me and it sounded very exciting. I'm gonna go to this like ballet school because the difference between these two schools was that Rock West was, for me, it was still much more serious than what I had experienced before, but it was more well-rounded, I think. Like they had really good tap classes, they had jazz classes, they had other stuff going on but the rock school was like very focused on ballet education and they really were a pre-professional school. Like, so the fact that I got into the summer intensive, I was very excited. So I went to the, the summer intensive and I don't know at what point it was, but they encouraged me to start taking all of my classes at the rock school in Philadelphia. And my family does not live in Philadelphia. They've never lived in Philadelphia. We live outside in the suburbs. So it was, you know, a big time commitment, gas and car commitment. So then that probably meant I was gonna have to leave public school a little bit earlier in the day so that I could commute into Philadelphia and make it for my classes. I was really focused. I started making 
more of my friends at the ballet school. I spent all my free time doing this. You know, I wouldn't go on the field trips and stuff that normal kids would do because I was like, no, I can't miss a single class, which of course is really silly looking back. I'm like, of course you can miss a single class and go on your school field trip. But at the time I was just way too excited and way too serious about it. I kept going, I kept earning scholarships. Again, it wasn't something that my family was gonna be able to pay me through. I was reliant on that. So at 15, I went to my first out of state summer intensive and I went to Pacific Northwest Ballet School summer intensive in Seattle. And it was so cool. Of course then once I was there, I made a lot of different friends and met lots of other girls. And I learned a lot because of course, whenever you switch up teachers, as amazing as your teachers are, it's good to get different perspectives from different teachers. They see different things, they'll say something in a different way, and then it could click with you, which happened with me a lot. So that was like a really cool summer at 15. I think I was gone for maybe like five or six weeks or something. And again, that was like on scholarship money because I wasn't gonna fly out to Seattle and have to pay for the boarding and pay for the school. And I went back to the rock school. The next summer I went to the San Francisco Ballet School summer intensive. That was such a cool summer and I loved it. And I was a little bit more focused at that point that year because I was 16. I was thinking a little bit more about the end game. I knew a lot of the people who wanted to stay for the year round program would get picked from the summer intensives. Wasn't ready to do that yet but I had it in the back of my mind. Once I had started high school, I was in all online classes and my entire day was spent at the rock school, but I was still commuting in every day. I was taking public transportation. So I was waking up at like 5 a.m. to do that. So that wasn't like always super fun if I'm being honest. I was getting a lot of experience there. But they weren't connected to a ballet company as much as my directors were so lovely and so helpful for me. So then when I went back for the second summer intensive, that's when I said I was interested in staying for the year round program and they took me and they were able to offer me scholarships that would allow me to be able to afford to go. So I made my move out there and I went to San Francisco and I spent one year in their school program at level eight. There aren't like years, there isn't graduation in America. You're kind of just level based. For somebody who is, you know, in Europe or a more structured classroom setting, that might seem strange, but um, yeah. So I was in level eight for one year, finished up my last credits for high school online. And then after that, I was asked to be a trainee. And that is such an amazing trainee program. I don't think I realized how great their trainee program was that when I chose to move to San Francisco, I thought that far, I don't think so. But their training program, they actually do give a stipend so that you can live, you get free housing, and then you're actually working so much with the company, at least when I was there. A lot of the triple bill stuff, not so much, but for example, we did do glass pieces, by Drum Robbins, learn Symphony and C. I didn't perform that one, but mostly it was the big ballets and we would actually dance in them. I had my own spot actually when I was still in level eight. I did my own spot for Giselle as a Willie because one of the girls got injured. That understanding of how a company actually works. Doing your best to improve your technique is great. Of course you have to do that, but actually working in a company is a skill that you have to hone. Of course, not everybody has that ability, but if you can, it is really great to be able to work with a company where you're not yet a company member. The expectations are different, if you know what I mean. Of course, you're trying to prove your worth and work hard, but their expectation isn't that you're already a professional. I did also a lot of training performances. We did our own stuff. We would go to different places. One of the years we toured to Tokyo, Japan, which was super cool. Uh, that was my first time actually leaving the country as an adult. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was my first time leaving the country, like since I was a toddler. Oh, wow. So yeah, so I went to Japan, which is like such a cultural difference as well. I loved it so much, it's like a gala situation. 
it was awesome and we spent so much time like just exploring Tokyo. And then there was something I just felt like I wanted to move somewhere else then. <laughs> I think I just started liking moving around and I ended up taking a job at English National Ballet in London which I mean I think was a great company to start out. It like teaches you hard work. I think anybody who's ever worked in that company even before when it was London Festival Ballet I think that they can tell you that that place works you hard. Rep is repetitive so it kept coming back but that also was really beneficial as a young dancer in a different way because I learned how to get over my nerves, I learned how to be smart, how I perform. I learned a lot of valuable lessons. That's also where I met my fiancé, so that's probably my highlight is, is meeting my future husband there. After four years in that company, we decided to move again. So then we both moved down to Munich, Germany at the Bayerische Staatsballet, which is where I am now. We just wanted more of a diverse rep and it's like basically the polar opposite here where it's like we have so many different programs. Like I think my first season was 12 different programs and the only program I knew was on Yegin because of San Francisco Ballet when I did it as a as a student, I think. Everything else was brand new choreography to me, even new music. Uh, my head exploded that year. It wasn't that we did as many performances at, as we did at ENB. We did more shows at ENB but we were doing way more rep and my brain was going at like a million miles per hour trying to keep up with all this stuff, uh, as well as move to a country that is not English speaking. So that was a lot <laughs> and it's been a great experience. It's again, it's just a very different thing. I think all the places that I've been have just been very different from each other, which is fun uh, because I've learned a lot of different things. I don't know, I don't really think of myself as some kind of a brave person at all. Um, but I guess it does take some bravery to do this profession and also to be able to move when something doesn't suit you. Like if you don't feel like something is working for you to be able to move and decide to do something else, that's a big risk. That's hard. I'm not saying I like to torture myself. <laughs> But I have done it a few times now where I just kind of switched up. And uncomfortable makes you grow. I think that this profession is very hard due to the fact that I wanted to try different things, maybe not do the most obvious one, um, expand my horizons a bit, be challenged. It does mean though that I've missed a lot with my own family. You know, I, I not been there for many, many, many things because we don't get to choose when we have days off. We're exhausted a lot of the time, like physically, mentally. So even off days, sometimes I have zombied through. So that's kind of sad to think that I've zombied through quite a few days of my own life and I'm so young. But at the same time, I've gotten to live such extraordinary things that I would never do if I never became a professional ballet dancer. And one more time, I met my future husband doing it. The thing is, is that as much as performing sometimes terrifies me, I also love it. I think LA has a lot of things that we need to get better. We need to get better representation up on the stage. Um, we need to reach more people, which I think is a part of getting more representation up on the stage. It's a living art. It's not a painting that was painted 600 years ago, and so we look at it. It's something that we're still doing actively. So I think that there's a lot that we need to do, but that's not really the point of this video. The point of this video was just to tell you my history and how I got into ballet. So maybe I'll leave that rant for another time. I think my background also is probably very different than quite a few people's, um, even other professional ballet dancers, simply because I didn't either stay in America or was completely trained and stayed in Europe. I mean, I had so many different kinds of teachers. I had Latin American teachers, I had Balanchine teachers, I had a bit more in the middle kind of teachers, some that were just very classical in general. Uh, I had a French, well, I had several French teachers. I had Russian teacher, <laughs> I had Hungarian teacher. Yeah, it's cool though. Like, I think in the end, 
As much as sometimes I have an identity crisis and I'm like, I don't even know which is the thing I prefer to do because it doesn't even matter to me at this point. Because <laughs> now I've got my English um, company experience as well and I'm in Germany uh, where there's a lot of Russian influence and I don't know anymore. Like, I don't think I have an identity with ballet. I just am happy to like dance and I like to adapt things. So yeah, that's my story. Maybe another time we can talk a little bit about the relevance of ballet in the modern world and how we need to move it forward. But for now, I thought I would give just a little bit of background on myself and my training and my career and how I got here. How much luck was involved. I just happened to know that girl who wanted to go take some tap lessons. And then I became a professional ballet dancer. And now I'm gonna get married to another professional ballet dancer. If you have been liking my content, please subscribe to my channel. If you liked this video, maybe like it. <laughs> if you didn't like it, I'm very sorry. And I will see you guys next week. Bye.